Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 40. In today's episode, we're going to convert parts per million into milligrams per meter cubed. Um, this is something that, that you will have to do every so often, depending upon if you're looking for an um, occupational exposure in the workplace. Do you have to report your um, values to the state for an operating permit? Whatever the, whatever the case is, there's a lot of times where we get the sample in milligrams per cubic meter and have to convert it over to ppm. In today's episode, we're going to talk about converting it from ppm to uh, milligrams per meter cubed. Uh, I am a flawed human, so I like to... Um, come up with a automated system as much as possible. So I use Excel, and once I get my formula down, I just have to go back and make sure I have all all the the things to plug and chug and put in there, uh, just so that it's just like literally me who's typing it in wrong. Even though I know the formula and I know every variant, I've just typed it in wrong or I've done something by hand wrong. So we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about uh, automated systems then. So let's talk about the reasons why. We talked a little bit about it. When you get these um, samples, when you're sampling for some form of a chemical, some chemical out there, sometimes you're doing it because you, you need to know if your people are being overexposed some, to something. And other times, it's just part of your uh, operating permit then. So a lot of times, the um, um, conversion factors, I'm sorry, a lot of times, the sample that comes back is in parts per million and sometimes it's also in milligrams per meter cubed depending on um, what you are trying to measure and of course how you're trying to um, report it you have to go back and forth a lot of times on both it would be awesome if as a society we came up with you're just going to do it this way and that's it but we're just not there so uh, so we'll go over the uh, conversion factors and all that stuff. Uh, the one thing that we do have to have is that, uh, the, uh, that molecular weight of the chemical that we're looking for. And uh, also when we take these samples, temperature and atmosphere will play an um, influence. We are not going to worry about that in today's example. We're just going to say that there's no influence with chemical, I mean, with temperature and, and atmosphere. And we will we'll calculate. So let's talk about the OSHA permissible exposure limit. This is going to be something that's legally enforceable by OSHA itself then. So they have almost all of their PELs in parts per million. It's not always the case, but it's pretty darn close to almost all of them are, are out there. So when we get a sample, there's a lot of times when the sample will come back from the sample lab and it'll say your concentration is in X uh, milligrams per meter cubed. And so it was trying to look for a volume of air. It took the sample and a sample and pump. It then says, ah, here's your result at the end. So we have to go back and use some math and figure out exactly what that was out there then. So first thing that we have to have is the uh, like molecular weight of the sample chemical then too. So not all of these chemicals, you can say, oh, I've decided that it's five. And then it all mathematically works out then. So you have to have that uh, weight to go back and sample that. Uh, let's look at the formula itself. So your concentration in milligrams per meter cubed, that's what we're trying to find in today's example. It's going to be equal to 0 0.0409 times the concentration in ppms times the molecular weight. That will give you your um, conversion factor to figure out what milligrams per meter cubed is going to be then. So when we look at a couple of the uh, common samples out there, and some of them are samples we take in the workplace, but there's also a lot of samples that we have to take as part of our operating permit. When you have our operating permit, it's basically a license to pollute. And part of that, of course, is that they want you to monitor and measure your emissions and, of course, report back on this. So when we look at uh, a couple of the common chemicals sampled out there, we have ozone, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and methane. And when we look at the uh, permissible exposure limit, ozone is 0 0.1 ppms, carbon monoxide is 50 ppms, CO2 is 500 ppms, and methane is 1,000 ppms, but there is no permissible exposure limit for 
uh, things like methane. So the closest thing is going to be the NIOSH recommended exposure limit. Now, even though that there's no PEL and it's not enforceable, if your permit says you will report the following things, well, you still have to report those following things. So now that we kind of have that, let's look at the, uh, uh, the molecular weights. So with ozone, it's going to be 48 grams per molecule. Carbon monoxide, 28.01 grams per molecule. Carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams per molecule. And methane, 16.04 grams per molecule. And let's do some math here. So let's look at the ozone at a uh, large industrial site. So we're trying to figure out what the milligrams per meter cubed is going to be. So we take our formula, 0 0.0409 times 10 ppms, which is what our sample came back with, times 48. And that's what, of course, the uh, molecular weight is. So it comes back with milligrams per meter cubed, 19.632. And when we look at a city street, you know, um, we can have where uh, at a city street has um, your mobile sources, the emissions from, you know, factories, from chemical plants, plus, of course, a lot of um, mobile sources, cars, buses, uh, um, trucks, all that stuff then. So let's look at a city street example. And in this one, the PPMs was 0.52. So we use the same exact formula, and we have 1.021 milligrams per meter cubed. Let's switch gears and look at carbon monoxide then. So from a large industrial site, we have the milligrams per meter cubed, same exact thing that we're trying to find. But on this sample, it's going to be 44 ppms. So we then come back, we plug it, we chug it, we go through then. And then so uh, the milligrams per meter cubed is going to be 50.407 carbon monoxide for a city street. You know, we're just walking down the city street. We know that we have some ambient CO, but we also know that things are adding to the ambient CO. We're city street, buses, um, cars, of course, factories, all that good stuff then. So we want to figure out the milligrams per uh, meter cubed still. In this example, it comes back as 10 ppms. So we're going to plug and chug and go through the formula. And then we come back with milligrams per meter cubed, 11.456. So again, it depends on what you're trying to monitor because you have to have that molecular weight. How you're going to report it, are you going to do ppms or milligrams per meter cubed, or in, in certain cases, pretty pretty darn rare cases, they're actually asking for both then. So it really kind of depends on, like you have to, when you get a permit, you have to read and understand every single thing in there. So there's going to be some legal, legal things where it says you will do the following. Other things said it's the best industry practice to do this and give to us. You really have to understand exactly what you have to do. And that is it for episode 40. So in today's episode, we converted the parts per million to um, <clears throat> to uh, milligrams per meter cubed. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me here today. My name is Dr. David Ayers. Have a safe day.